What I said to Audrey was that the hospital is more important than the arts festival and she was going to have to hold her meetings during the lunch hour and in the evenings. I see. The problem is, Steve, she's got an awful lot of key people from this hospital working on the arts festival, important people, and as worthy as the project is, I can't go pulling people off their job just to work on the arts festival. But they don't all go at the same time. No, not all the time, but that's not the point. The point, Steve, is that when these people are working on the project, there are very important positions in this hospital that are not covered. All right, I understand you, and uh, your point of view does make uh, sense. Uh, now I'd like to talk to some of the others. Would you please ask uh, Jesse and Amy to come in? Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Please sit down. Now, would you mind telling me what's been going on? Sure, the basic Alan. Problem is become that the a dictator. Had no oh, hold, hold it a minute. Hold it a minute. One at a time, please. Jesse? Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't think that the problems had anything to do with the functional changes Alan made. I really don't. I mean, he was the boss, and he called the tune. But when you come to procedural changes, they're compounded, the problems are compounded by an administrator who has no tact. Easy, easy on the comparisons, Jesse. He was overbearing, Steve, with every change he made, every improvement he tried to make. You did say improvement. Improvement in his opinion, that is. And as far as Audrey goes, well, we all know that she's perfectly capable of doing a job here beautifully and taking on a difficult outside project. That's true enough. And the nurses, Steve. Don't forget the nurses. Nobody's better with them than Audrey. That's Nobody. That's very, very true. I mean, that's the most important part. General Hospital needs Audrey. We all do. You don't have to tell me that, Jesse. I think uh, you're going to have a very difficult decision to make. I think you may have to choose who's more important to General Hospital. Audrey or Alan in his present executive position. All right, let me ask one more question then. Amy, did Alan ask or demand anything that might be considered uh, beyond uh, regular standards or regulations? Well, no. But that also doesn't mean that I should have to do my job uh, upside I down think, I think by I've, my toes because I by think the I've heard enough for now. Thank you. If not, I'll talk to you both later. Now, would one of you please find uh, Monica and ask her to come in here, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. my desk, I'll expedite it, all right? Alan, that's a lot of forms. Well, you'd better get started then, hadn't you? <sighs> How'd you do in there? Not terrific, that's for sure. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Steve will get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I hope so. Here's Alstead, report to admission. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, no. London must have agreed with you. Oh, Welcome back. Thank you. Oh. It's good to be back. Have you been home yet? Well, no, I just came here trying to look for Tom. Oh, well, I haven't seen him. No. I checked the teen center. He's been spending a lot of time there. I should have thought of that. You know, he told me he's been over there a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. So, are you back for keeps? I sure am. I just good. had to go home and unpack and check with Steve as to when it's good to come back to work. Uh, but first things first, I have a husband to look for. All right. Okay, excuse me. John. Good to welcome see back. you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Delay. The kids needed some paint brushes and canvas. Well, did you get it all straightened out? Yeah, you've been found an extra easel downstairs. Louise, we need to talk. 
about last night? About my terrific dinner? Look, the meal was terrific. The wine was terrific. It's just that my conduct it wasn't so terrific. Well, I don't think I understand. The kiss. Something happened. It was it was unexpected, unplanned, and spontaneous. Of course. But... And you have been alone now, what, for three months? Louise, I... Well, I... Just, just a minute. Let me finish. A moment happened, and that's it. The only thing I have to say is, is thank you. There is no need for the gun, Mr. Donnelly. If we wished you dead, you'd be dead. Now, Mr. Donnelly, why is this LeBlanc, uh, whoever he is, so important to you? Because I believe, as you well know, that he was the last man to contact Frisco Jones. And who is this Mr. Jones? He was an agent for the WSB. Oh, you are with the WSB. No, I used to be. <laughs> People seem to forget that now and then. Been out of it for a while. The point is, Frisco was assigned to gather information about a certain terrorist group. But before he could turn that information over to the WSB, the terrorists found out about it and been trying to retrieve it ever since. And how does that involve CNL Bell? Because I think Frisco hid the information in the music box. The same music box that you manufactured for him. <laughs> Making music boxes and spying aren't exactly the same thing, Mr. Dunnany. You seem to know more about that music box than I do, and I want to know exactly what you know. Because those same terrorists are threatening the life of Felicia Jones, who is a friend of mine. Well, she's not, however, a friend of mine. If you really did help Frisco send that information out in the music box, then you're as interested as I am in keeping it out of the hands of the terrorists. So could we please condense this little discussion of ours and get on with our business? Moichi. Getting that information back to the people it was intended for, the WSB. Assuming you had that information, who would you give it to at the WSB? That's a tough one, I'm not sure. But I'd better explain that statement. Does the name James Kinley mean anything to you? Go on. I was with him when he died. Or, should I say, when he was killed. I'm convinced he was going to give me the name of a, of a double agent. But they killed him before I was able to find out who it is. They still done it, he... Would you please move back to the music box and the car? Now be very careful, Mr. Donnelly. The next few moments will be very important to you because during them, we will either learn that you're telling me the truth or I promise you, you will die. I would like a film developed. I've got it right. All right, let me just get the form. The name, please? Uh, Marshall. Jennifer Marshall. Where do all the Um, could this be ready by tomorrow? I can mark it rush. It'll cost you extra, though. Oh, that's okay. Good. Have you had good luck with the camera? Oh, it's the first time I've used it, actually. I just made some tests. Anything else I can get you? Nothing. All right. The print should be in by midday tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, aren't you Mr. Wall? Yes. Uh, remember me, Miss St. John? Oh, of course. You haven't been around in quite a while, though. Uh, no, I've been busy. 
You know, I thought I saw someone that I know standing here a moment ago. Uh, long, dark hair. Jennifer Marshall. Yes, Marshall. Mm -hmm. You know, you should treat her well. She's the wife of the owner of Club Duke. Oh, thanks for the tip. <laughs> She's a nice lady. She's been testing out a new camera and just brought in a film for development. Oh, that's very interesting. I, I didn't know she was interested in photography. Well, maybe she's just starting. Probably. Well, but don't mention that I asked about her. She probably doesn't want anyone to know she is. Mom is the word. Well, I have some film of my own to be developed. <laughs> Would you believe I've forgotten it? Uh, don't we all? Well, I'll come back again. All right, bye-bye. Bye. So, Mr. Donnelly, you believe there is a mole, an informer for the terrorists within the WSB? I believe that Kinley knew who it was. Now, I'd like to know what you think. If I didn't consider it likely, I would deal with them directly. He was your only secure contact, wasn't he? You're a professional, Mr. Donnelly. You know the ropes. It seems like we're going to be doing business after all. I have some further information for you. Not only after I'm sure the that you're the man I'm looking for. It takes a brave man to try a bluff under these circumstances. But I believe you're being straight with me. Thanks for taking the gun away. I always get a little uh, edgy when those things are aimed at me. One last question, Mr. Donnelly. Did you see the imposter, the one who called himself LeBlanc, when he met with Felicia Jones? No, someone had already removed the body by the time I got there. I can show you no identification, but I am certain that if you ask Mrs. Jones to describe the disguise the imposter had on his face, you will know I am the original LeBlanc. Yeah. Put the machine on automatic and come inside. The purpose of this briefing is to reorient and move on to the next phase of our operations. You will all receive new identities and new objectives in the future. The reason for this change is that we now have evidence that Sean Donnelly, Felicia Jones, and Colton Shore have no idea that the music box is missing part of its original design. Obviously, they do not therefore have any idea where those parts may be found. Now, this information brings with it two consequences. First, we must research elsewhere for the information Frisco Jones uncovered that could endanger our operation. Second, our individuals, the individuals that we have been following, may possess no further importance to us. For that matter, they may, through their continuing meddling, create certain problems for us. They are therefore to be eliminated. Now, let me make one thing perfectly clear. Where Sean Donnelly, Felicia Jones, and Colton Shore are concerned, I will personally supervise their execution.